because, my God, they deserve it. But the John Calipari message, a video to the fans at Kentucky, Big Blue Nation, that he is, uh, he feels like it feels like it, they need a new voice. He probably needs to refresh himself. He is gone. We're going to get into the coaching search here in a moment, but still kind of hard to imagine. But he had been there 15 years. That's a long stretch for pretty much anybody. Yeah, it is, especially, you know, when coaches make as much as they do now and, um, you know, how, you know, ineffective he's been at, you know, finishing the job uh, as the coach. And, and some of those, you know, Things may be fair or not fair, but he was getting paid a lot of money at Kentucky to get them into the Final Four, and that hasn't happened in a, in a very long time. So, yeah, maybe he needs a fresh spot and a fresh voice and all, all that. So, I, I don't know. I, uh, I'm, i um, you know, I... I, I, I this... still thought that this would turn around in a boomerang mm-hmm. style that somehow or another it would not happen. I'm happy for Arkansas because Eric Musselman was a pretty good coach despite this year, but I'm... I'm, I'm glad it's worked out for the Arkansas Razorbacks fans. They're a great basketball fan base, too. Yeah, I think it, uh, it's just nice to have some finality to at least one part of this. No more speculating like the last 24 hours over whether he's actually leaving or not. Now we know for a fact he's leaving. No more speculation about what he's trying to do behind the scenes. I saw, and man, it's so hard to sort through what's what. I mean, nowadays, it's just so unchecked on what information is clear. So you really have to be careful as as usual, but... Um, I just saw so many different things flying about it, and so I don't even know what's true as far as what he was trying to work behind the scenes with his deal. The last thing that I saw was that apparently he had gone to Mitch Barnhart in Kentucky and said, like, hey, here's the offer that I've got. Match it. That's from a longtime Kentucky broadcaster. Yeah, yeah. so that's the last thing that I had seen, and then uh, basically Kentucky and Mitch Barnhart said, no, see ya, and he's off to Arkansas, and it's official now with that video being his goodbye letter to – Big Blue Nation. So uh, at least we know that part of it is official now and we can move on from the, oh, shoot, has he got one foot in and he's about to take it back out and stay at Kentucky because we haven't heard anything. Uh, Now we know the deal there and a massive coaching search starts. But, yeah, it's a great hire by Arkansas. I mean, the clear thing here is he was facing a lot of pressure moving forward because they've not been as successful as they should have been Mm -hmm. given all of the resources, given – the head coach, given the players, given the backing. And he saw the clock ticking or the seat warming and thought, hey, I'll just reset entirely. Still in the SEC, can bring players at will because of the transfer portal, and I'll just go set it back to zero and uh, go sit on down in the nice, cool seat that's going to have a lot of pressure attached to it as well, but not nearly what he would have had in Lexington this year. So, I mean, it's a smart move on his part, and – uh, he's none the worse for wear, and Kentucky uh, will be fine. But, you know, like we said, there's a big coaching search coming up I now. just saw this, and there's no, more than one handful. We'll have, by the way, uh, today at 4 Westmore, who's the one that popped the story on Sunday afternoon about Calipari in Arkansas. He's out of uh, Little Rock, Fox 16, and also the, the Buzz radio station in Little Rock. He'll join us today at 4 o'clock. Uh, a lot of reporters now saying that he will not be officially announced until tomorrow morning introductory press conference sometime tomorrow evening at the Bud Walton Arena. And Arkansas fans are like, what the hell? He's already done a video that he's moving (laughs) on. I don't know if it's a legal thing or something that has to go through the Board of Regents. Juracek, who obviously did a great job from Musselman to uh, now Calipari, uh, has not put anything out there. But that is tomorrow. Today's day is about Calipari leaving Kentucky, but so was yesterday and even a lot on Sunday. So Nate Oates, his name was brought up as a possible candidate. He put out a note yesterday, uh, fully committed to this team. Talked about the university, talked about Alabama, uh, wants to win its first national championship in men's basketball. Despite my, uh, despite any rumors to the contrary, uh, assured, rest assured, I will continue the pursuit as your head coach. So, and roll tide. Craig, how do you say it? Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Now, also, Greg Byrne, the AD at Alabama, then followed up with a a tweet discussing and making sure that Alabama's fans understood NIL. And by the way, that can help, too, as they now move on after their great run this year. That's from our good friend Pat Smith. So then I asked this question amongst myself. So if uh, Nate Oates is putting out a statement, last night after winning back-to-back national titles, Dan Hurley made it clear I mean, Nate Oates, I just want to say brilliant 
on the part of Alabama. Yeah. Was he even going to be the guy? Yeah. Was he the top five candidate? Mm-hmm. Was he a top ten candidate? I'm sure he was high up on the list, but I'm just saying brilliant on Alabama's part to go ahead and say, no, he's going to turn down contacted? Kentucky yeah. Yeah. and uh, turn down Kentucky to stay here at Alabama and build it here. And I, I just think that that was a good play on the part of the Tide mm-hmm. um, to uh, to present it like that. And Dan Hurley made it clear last night that they have the resources at UConn to continue to do what they do every March and April after winning their sixth national title. We'll get to some more of the details on that. So then I asked, I said, like, so what about Scott Drew's name? It's out there. We've heard it. It's been out there. A lot of national writers has put his name out there. We had Ashley Hodge to discuss it yesterday. So I asked somebody at Baylor administration about the concerns because it is Kentucky. I think, sure, Kentucky is like Alabama football. If you've got a coach who is really uh, good at any place that's not quite one, the top 1% um, place, then, then you're concerned. So then I asked, okay, what about a statement? I love this response. I think on the statement thing, I think there's a lot more reason for guys who have changed jobs every three or four years to put out statements that they're not going compared to a guy that's been here or in the same job for 21 years. Yeah, I, I yeah I do think it's funny uh, how all these things happen now. Uh, I, I'm not going to credit him completely with this, um, but uh, – Dan Lanning in Oregon, when he got out in front of that Alabama thing, mm-hmm. and then Alabama kind of stealing that same deal with, or using that same tactic with Nate Oates. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm not involved in this. And then Mitch Barnhart, I'm sure he's been thinking about it, but he might be thinking like, well, yeah, I know you're not because I wasn't going to call you, but all right. I mean, thanks for making it easier on me to not have to answer, hey, what did you ever call Nate Oates? I mean, you take yourself out of that. But yeah, I... um the Kentucky search is going to be... He said they're going to find somebody to continue or move the tradition yeah. forward. He did leave uh, uh, put out a quote about that earlier yeah. today. Yeah, and it's going to be very, very interesting uh, who comes out of the word work that wants it or who they go uh, after that maybe you wouldn't publicly say that they were looking for it. But, you know, and, and again, right now, there's a Vegas uh, sports book that is giving one-to-one odds on Scott Drew. I think that's a little bit too too generous uh, or too like sure of a thing uh, now that's not to say it's impossible but one-to-one is kind of it's kind of you know one-to-one compared to everybody else is a heavy favorite yeah. and, and and vegas does that for betting they also usually know some things uh, i continue to be told that, that that baylor knows what's going on of course they're not dumb uh, but that they uh, they feel pretty good about Scott Drew. They feel good about Scott Drew staying where he is in Waco. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand the whole not putting out a statement thing. Uh, if he did that, he would have already had to have put one out a couple weeks ago with the Louisville job and maybe even another one this offseason. I don't even recall now what all jobs have been open, but at least one like two weeks ago. We would have seen a, well, a graphic. Could have, like Arkansas before this could even have put happened. Out a graphic or for Arkansas or whoever. Could, yeah, exactly. Know. So, I mean, how many times are you going to do that? And so I do think to – that if you were going to start that trend, this would be the job to do it, though. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're Scott Drew, if you really want to calm people's fears, then this would be the situation because this is the first time I think you actually feel threatened, mm-hmm. honestly. Uh, Louisville never appeared to be much of a threat. All due respect to their tradition and history, that's what they were actually banking on being the pull for him. And I'm sure a little bump in NIL maybe or – you know, this or that, that they felt like was a, a pull for Scott Drew to leave the gig that he has here. But I don't think any of us felt that it was ever that serious. And and I said time and time again, like, sure, I could see him leaving if he just wants to do something different. But beyond that reason, there is no reason for him to take the Louisville job over the Baylor job. The Kentucky job, that's a little bit different, guys. That is Alabama football. Well, that's what that, yeah. Yeah, that, that I mean, that's what I was saying yesterday. And so... Uh, That is different. That is a real deal, big time threat. And that is one that I think you have to take very seriously and and really uh, acknowledge and and think about being like, yeah, the one that could pull him away potentially. So I think everybody's on board that that's the case. And now just waiting with bated breath, uh, hopefully not holding their breath too tight uh, because we don't know how long this is going to take. But I, I, based on Mitch Barnhart's response of like, okay, see ya. It seems like they've already got far down the road with whoever they think they're probably going to get. Now, they might still have a choice of folks, but it doesn't sound like they're concerned about getting turned down by many people based on, like, okay, see you, Cal. Uh, we need a fresh start. You need a fresh start. 
we'll see it at the crossroads. So uh, that was not revealing, but just interesting to me of how sh- sure they were about moving on. And, and I just, I assumed that to be uh, feeling pretty good about who they're going to land or, or where they are in that whole process. So, yeah, I mean, Scott Drew's front and center, every person attached to basketball who was at the game last night says like he's the, the name that's being bandied about the most well after you know obviously Dan Hurley saying I'm not going to be the guy and Nate Oates, Nate Oates saying he's not going to be the guy again that was just a, a brilliant PR tactic by him in Alabama because we don't know how realistic that would have been Hurley we can say like yeah of course they'd be interested in Dan Hurley yeah. he's only won the last two national titles so that one that you know for sure but yeah I mean it's uh a very interesting time now because this does feel different than uh, the other several jobs that have popped open over the years that Scott Drew's been rumored to be involved with. I still lean towards him staying at Baylor, but I'm very um, aware that this could go a different route because mm-hmm. of the job that we're talking. So I think you just got to be prepared for, for every instance here and, and not be too confident this is just going to be the same old thing where eventually he's just back in Waco. Well, well, the biggest difference between Louisville and Kentucky is that Louisville is at the bottom and Kentucky is inexplicably in the middle. Like, the, like or towards the the lower end of the top in that they're getting recruits that other coaches would crawl across hot coals, broken glass, like in a, in a hurricane through a tornado to get to. And John Calipari is getting those guys. He's getting the guys who are NBA guys all the time and then hitting a wall in the tournament. So Kentucky's issues are minor compared to Louisville's. Kentucky's issues are, how do we get all these great players to win a couple more games for us every year, as opposed to Louisville is, how do we get great players again? There's there's a chasm in that, which makes the two jobs very different when it comes to any candidate, particularly Scott Drew's view, is that Louisville looks at him as he did this great rebuild job in Waco and man wouldn't it be great if you could do that again given we have way more tradition than Baylor did when he got there but Kentucky looks at it as well he did this great rebuild job in Waco and here we don't even really need a rebuild we just need you know some new plumbing in the bathrooms and some paint on the walls and we'll mm-hmm. be fine yep and and by the way uh Kentucky's a job if any coach got the offer and left to go to Kentucky for football like Alabama like remember now Steve Sarkeesian's name was brought up, for, the, but he's at Texas, which would be like right there in that same mix of three to five schools in football uh, and was not going to leave Texas. But that doesn't mean that Alabama uh, wasn't going to at least contact him and check him out because of the familiarity. Kentucky is Kentucky, as the quote said, that Kentucky in basketball is like Alabama uh, in football. So there we are with that. And we'll just see how uh, things work out over the next few hours because I would think – that this would not be something that would drag on too long because it affects the programs of coaches whose names are being brought up and and also the fact that Kentucky needs to act quickly to move on to the next era of their great basketball tradition.